guys, what's up? My name is Stephanie and I hiked the Camino in the May of 2018 and I was just going through some pictures and I figured I'd start making some videos to share my experience, share some mistakes, uh, which is this video, share some highlights and mistakes that I made and mistakes that I've seen other people make on the Camino and I'm going to share them with you today. So hopefully you don't make the same mistakes, but it is the Camino and if this is your first one, everyone's gonna make mistakes so don't feel bad. Uh, you learn as you go and it'll be an incredible experience. So without further ado, I'll give you the first mistake. So mistake number one, packing. Uh, this begins before you even leave for your Camino. Uh, what I've seen is a lot of people overpack on this trip. So if you have some backpacking experience, hiking experience, or just day trips or if you don't have anything at all you really don't need a lot on this trip specifically so if you're overpacking your bag what I notice is a lot of people will get blisters will have knee problems just it takes a toll on your body you are walking through towns every day you are gonna be stopping in some smaller towns that don't have much but then the next day you, you might be in a bigger city so I think that's one of the biggest mistakes that people make is overpacking. You're going to find things if you need them along the way. You don't need to pack for every scenario and then your bag gets super heavy and yeah it just makes your experience miserable and you can't really enjoy it as much. For me I hiked in a Osprey Temptus, Temptus 22. My friend hiked in the Osprey Temptus 30 I believe and Mine was really small, it fit exactly everything I needed, but if I could, I probably would have gone up just a little bit so it would have space to fit comfortably. But you know, if you're buying a big backpack, like 50 liters or 60 liters, you don't need it. You're just gonna fill it with stuff you don't need. Um, and if you do need some specific stuff, then yeah, you have to plan for that, but you really don't need a lot on this trip. You're not gonna be camping. Uh, there are going to be albergues along the way and hotels and hostels and just a lot of different kinds of accommodation that you don't have to specifically worry about packing everything. Okay, number two. Okay, so this is a major for me specifically. This was one of the only things that did get on my nerves on this trip was people waking up early. But not just being early risers, when they would wake up, they would wake everybody else up in the albergue. And I think one of these things is just be respectful of other people. It doesn't matter if you're coming in, you know, at the when the albergue closes at like 10 o'clock. You know, don't turn on all the lights. Unpack quietly, get ready quietly, go into bed. And if you're one of the people that are just an early riser and you want to start hiking at 5.30 before the sun rises, that's completely up to you, but when you do it and you do wake up, try to be as quiet as possible and don't turn on all the lights. Don't talk to other people. If you do, whisper or, you know, sit next to them. Don't talk to them across the room. You don't know what other people had gone through the day before. Uh, you don't know everyone's situation. Maybe they didn't want to get in at 9.30 and they had a long day or you know things happen and they want to sleep in sleep into even like eight o'clock they don't want to be woken up at six even if half the room is up you know be respectful of the other half i think that was one thing that got on me on my nerves and it, it was it kind of blew my mind because these were adults doing this like it is a lot of older people on the camino so you would think that people would have that kind of mentality already, especially in that kind of situation. But you know, it does happen and it probably will happen more than a couple times, but this is just one mistake that I saw a lot of people making and you know, people aren't gonna wanna be your friend if you're waking them up at 5.30 every morning, talking, turning on the lights, going through your bag, you know, there are ways to avoid it and ways to be, again, respectful of other people. Uh, mistake number three. 
that I saw a lot of people making and so we even got caught up in it is if you read about it in all the blogs and all the videos is you it's not a bed race you don't have to race to the next bed the majority of the time there are going to be albergues with plenty of beds there's going to be hotels there's going to be so much that you don't have to worry and you know if something happens to be full you can just move on to the next one or i know a lot of people don't like to but they book ahead um, we booked ahead a few times because our first day was on a national holiday weekend for Spain. So there was a lot more people out on the trail and we kind of got screwed over our first night when everything was booked or yeah, booked and full and we had to actually taxi back to St. John after a very, very long day in the rain and cold through the Pyrenees. So, um, it's not a race. And the majority of the time that was just because it was a holiday weekend don't make that your trip like don't wake up in the morning thinking okay you have to get to bed you get, need to get to this town to just get a bed because other people will make you feel like it's that way and it's not and yeah you know, just because they're waking up at 5 30 does not mean that you have to uh, I, me and my friend, uh, and another couple people that we met on the Camino, we would be the last ones out of the albergue. We would take our time, have breakfast, stop in a bunch of the towns, lunch, you know, pack a picnic, because that's the way we enjoyed our Camino. We thought about beds like more towards the end of the day, and it's like, okay, where do we want to stop? Should we call ahead, see if they have something available, or should we stop here? So we took it day by day. Um, that was completely up to us if you want to have everything planned out ahead of time before you even leave for the Camino that is entirely up to you because everybody's Camino is different and I think that's something you have to remember is you can look around but your Camino is going to be your Camino and that's the way that it should be. Okay, mistake number four is, and I even caught myself doing this is judging other people for their Camino. I try not to, and every now and then, because other people will talk about it, especially the people you start out with, and if you're running into them, it's just something you're going to talk about, is judging other people for where they began. So I started in St. John with my best friend, and that's where we wanted to. Uh, her mom, how we, got into the Camino, hiked from Soria, did the last 100 kilometers to Santiago de Compostela, and you know, that was her Camino, and she wants to go back and do the full thing. You know, people don't have the luxury of taking more than a month off to hike the whole thing. Like, come on, if you have two weeks and you want to start in Lyon, start in Lyon. At least you get to experience a part of it. Uh, you don't have to begin at the beginning. I think it's the last 100 kilometers from Soria to Santiago to get your Compostela. So if that's the time you have off, that's your vacation, uh, then that's completely fine. A lot of people don't have that luxury of having a month off, especially those from the US, which I'm from the US. So, and I am a student, so I still have the summers off to take my time to do that. But one thing I did notice was Wherever people, you know, we get an influx of new hikers, like maybe Astorga or Leon or even Pamplona at the beginning, there is that air to people who'd start started earlier as in, oh, I've been hiking longer, um, kind of just like had their nose in the air, like they're better than the people starting later for some reason. And I thought it was just funny because I mean, it is everyone's Camino, like, that's where they want to start, or that's where they can only start. It's not, it might not be entirely up to them, but yeah, if you can, if you can start at St. John, like, I think that's a beautiful place to start uh, for the Camino Francis, so I don't know for the Northern Camino route or the Portuguese route, um, I'm sure it's probably something similar. Don't. Don't give people a hard time. They're excited to get on the trail, and yeah, you might have been hiking for two weeks and are tired, and you've been through a lot already. You know, welcome new people or people that have come back and did it in sections. Uh, 
we're all in it together and we're all going through the same pain and we're all going through the same enjoyments and you know the excitement of being on the Camino de Santiago so yeah respect people's decisions of where they want to begin or where they can begin all right and mistake number five that my final mistake that uh, I think people make on the Camino is worrying about other people's Camino so it's kind of all of the mistakes combined together and a lot of people do it like you know they look at other people and they're oh they walked you know 30 miles a day they're perfectly fine uh you know you don't have to do that you don't have to walk 30 miles in a day if you want to walk five miles a day like do what you can do what you want to do enjoy your time i what we did again is we took our time we weren't the people up at 6 a.m like uh we weren't the people uh, like in the albergues first in line like we were usually always the last ones rolling up at like six or seven and then having dinner and then going to sleep but you know we had a day's worth of activities we didn't get into a small town and you know just sat around and we're like okay now what do we do uh we enjoyed our time we stopped for lunch we packed picnics like that was the way we wanted to enjoy our camino but you know some people do like to get up early and knock out as many miles as they can you know maybe not stop for lunch uh just like snack along the way get in early you know shower do laundry which is completely fine it's Everyone's Camino is their own, and uh, your Camino is your Camino, and I can't stress that enough, and I think people, when you go on, especially on your first walk or your first pilgrimage, you want it to be an experience that you create for yourself, so don't worry about the person next to you in the bunk bed, what they're going to be doing the next day. And if you guys enjoy walking together, you're going to make a ton of friends. Or if you want to be left alone and walk it, you know, in your own mind, that's completely fine. People will allow you to do that. So you create your own experience and you don't want to remember your time on the Camino de Santiago thinking about, oh, what you could have done differently or like maybe you shouldn't have followed another person's way just do it completely on your own if you like this video please give it a thumbs up it really supports my channel and subscribe if you'd like to uh, see more videos I'd like to get some more out talking about my specific experience things my highlights uh, more tips more tricks some more of my gear what I brought because I did not bring a lot but it brought I brought what I needed and the Camino does provide, so I think that's something to remember, so I'll see you next time.